<laughs> breakfast. What time do you have breakfast, if at all? What do you like to eat for breakfast, if anything? Should we have breakfast? Is it the most important meal of the day? And if somebody says to you, what should I have for breakfast? What is your advice? And could there be better questions? Because as an exercise professional, people, yes, of course, will ask us about food. But I don't know about you, but I'm not a food expert. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a diet, no, not a dietitian. Even though I have done multiple courses on nutrition and food and how to eat effectively, but I'm an exercise professional. So all I want to do is make sure that people can get fit and strong, be healthy, and of course you have to fuel for that. But ultimately I ask this question, if somebody's really fit and strong and they've got a brain that's working effectively and they, they want to keep getting fitter and stronger, is it possible that they will make better decisions about their food? versus let's tell people what they can't have, mustn't have, shouldn't have, don't have, what's bad for them, that they should or shouldn't have breakfast or they should or shouldn't eat three or five times every day. Uh, all the different uh, ideas there are about food. If we tell people what to do about food and it doesn't fit in with their lifestyle, or I always ask this question, the further we get away from what somebody's doing at the moment, is there more or less likelihood that they're going to stick to what we give them? So if somebody loves to have breakfast and we tell them you shouldn't eat breakfast at all because you should be an intermittent faster and not eat till four o'clock in the afternoon, or we tell people you shouldn't eat at all after four o'clock in the afternoon and breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and this person happens to be an intermittent fasting person who doesn't want to eat until after four o'clock in the afternoon, there's two things that could happen. Uh, could we have an argument and how's that going to work out for our long-term relationship? Or if somebody does what we tell them to do and it doesn't fit into their lifestyle, how will that affect their mental health and the way they feel about food? And or if they uh, don't do what we tell them to do and then they feel guilty or angry or disappointed in themselves because they, they think they should be doing what we tell them to do but they can't do it because it's too hard to stick to. And I think that there's some really important questions to ask as exercise professionals. What do I need to do to make sure that my client, the person that I care about, the person that's investing time, money and energy in me is going to get the best results possible in the shortest period of time in the safest way possible? So when it comes to food, rather than telling people breakfast is the most important meal of the day, you should have cereal for breakfast, or you shouldn't have cereal for breakfast, because there's a big one. A lot of uh, information is coming out about, oh, you shouldn't be eating cereal because it's carbohydrate and it's bad for you. And there's some people where cereal is their favorite food. I've got friends who their favorite comfort food is a big bowl of Cocoa Pops in front of the movie uh, that they're enjoying, or they like to have... Uh, wheat bix and banana uh, when they get home from work in the afternoon. Or they like to have some crunchy nut cornflakes uh, on ice cream because it's their favourite treat. So if I said to those people, you can't have cereal, it's bad for you, it's going to make you fat, it's made of carbohydrate, we would probably either have an argument, and I'm not into arguing at all, or they just wouldn't like me very much. And that wouldn't be much fun with your friends, let alone your clients, because obviously you want to build a great relationship with the people who are investing time, money, and energy in you. So rather than telling people what to eat, should we ask the question, and one of the most important questions then, of course, is when it comes to food, uh, what do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? What are you eating at the moment? Where do you like to eat? And then what time of the day is your favorite time to start eating? Because uh, for some people, breakfast really is the most important meal of the day, and it's their favorite meal. There are some people that prefer to go out for breakfast than to go out for dinner, yeah? Uh, they love to have bacon and eggs for breakfast, or they love to have uh, eggs benedict for breakfast, or uh, a big bowl of cereal is their favorite thing. There's some exercise professionals who preach loudly that, yes, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and you should be eating the superfoods like porridge or oats. Uh, and there's some exercise people who eat porridge and oats three, four, five times a day. And there's other ones who would never eat it because it's carbohydrate and they're scared it's going to make them fat. So there's those controversial topics that I don't want to get involved in because I'm not a food person. I'm an exercise professional. I just want to make sure that whatever information that I share with my client or whatever questions I ask them is going to get them closer to their goal, not further away from their goal. Could that be a good idea? 
So if somebody loves to have breakfast, why would I tell them not to have breakfast? If it's their favorite meal of the day, could it be something that I'm taking away from them? The reverse of that, if you really believe that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and this person doesn't like to eat till four o'clock in the afternoon because they're intermittent fasting, then again, we could have an argument and that's not very much fun. So I always use those four supplementary questions when it comes to what are you doing at the moment. If somebody really loves to eat breakfast, and let's look at these three things. I've got fruit, bananas, I've got orange juice, and I've got wheat fix. Uh, they're, in some people's terminology, poison foods because they're carbohydrate. Even fruit. Some people are really anti-fruit because it's fructose and it's sugar and it's bad for you. I remember we were sitting... <coughs> excuse me. This is a very bizarre story. I came out and was sitting having breakfast one morning and a complete stranger came up to him and yelled at him, don't eat bananas, they're really bad for you. Uh, which I think is a really interesting way to begin a, a relationship or begin any kind of conversation with anybody. And obviously this person was very passionate about their belief in whatever's wrong with bananas. Uh, but there, are there people who eat bananas and really enjoy them? Uh, are there people who bananas are their favorite food? Uh, and is it important that if somebody likes to eat bananas, we should probably include it in their healthy eating plan? One of the things that I really love about my banana is that it comes in a little protective package. Uh, I know that the goodness inside a banana, the vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals that come inside a banana, they're nice and safe in there because even if people touch the outside of them, you're going to peel that off and just get the goodness on the inside. But you might not think the bananas are good. You might be like Cayman's uh, stranger who said, don't eat bananas, they're bad for you, and you never want to eat them. So why don't we ask that question? What do you love to eat? What don't you like to eat? Whatever you love to eat, we're going to include that in your healthy eating plan. Whatever you don't like to eat, we're not going to include that in your healthy eating plan because why would you waste calories on food that you don't like? And then that great question, what time of the day do you like to start eating and what do you actually like to eat? And it's interesting because all these very controversial topics, so I've covered off with bananas. Some people love them, some people hate them. Juice is a really interesting one too because a lot of people think juice has got too much sugar in it. You shouldn't give children juice. Juice is bad for you. But it's interesting, if you don't get vitamin C, there's a disease called scurvy. Uh, and we don't have very much of it in the world anymore because we tend to get enough vitamin C. Interestingly, did you know that the number one uh, source in the Western world right now for vitamin C is actually potato? Uh, the reason we don't have scurvy tends to not be because people are eating beautiful fresh fruit. It's because we're eating a fair bit of potato, whether it comes in uh, deep fried potato chips or whether it comes in packets of chips. We actually get some vitamin C from potatoes, which is kind of cool. Woohoo, because I like potatoes. How about you? Some people hate them. Isn't that interesting? There's so many controversial things about food. And uh, I just don't want to get involved in that conversation. As I shared before, I want my client to enjoy their food, to get healthy, fit and strong and stay that way for the rest of their life. And whatever I can do along the way to make sure that I'm fitting in with their lifestyle as close as as close as possible. So if people don't like to eat bananas, let's not suggest. If people are drinking juice and it's their only form of vitamin C, and it's really interesting because a lot of people take vitamin C supplements, uh, they take vitamin C drops, uh, highly concentrated form of vitamin C is orange juice. Uh, you eat an orange and you feel quite full and you get a fair bit of vitamin C from one orange. You have a glass of juice and you're getting four to five oranges from a from a calorie point of view and probably from a fructose sugar point of view that's fairly high but a really concentrated form of vitamin c and do we need it one of the highest forms of antioxidant to fight germs bugs viruses and diseases comes from vitamin c so just something to consider when it comes to the don't drink juice what if juice is somebody's favorite drink do we say don't drink it how about what do you love to eat? What don't you like to eat? And let's not include and include either of those. Cereal's really interesting because there are a lot of people who recommend cereal as a superfood, particularly porridge or oats. Uh, for fiber, a lot of nutritionists and dietitian, dietitians will recommend a high fiber cereal for breakfast uh, because fiber's the brooms that sweep the junk out of your body is probably the best way to describe fiber. But there's an argument from some other dietitians that the body doesn't need fiber. The people that are carnivores that are just, well, they, there are many nutritionist dietitians and, and lots of ologists, endocrinologists, cardiologists, 
that are suggesting that we are totally carnivore, which means you're not going to get any fruit or vegetables, you're not going to get any grains, which means you're not going to get any fibre. And they're suggesting that then fibre is not important. So that's, can you see why I don't like to get involved in the argument? Because there's ologists who suggest that you should eat fibre and there's ologists that suggest that you shouldn't. Uh, here's a great question uh, that I think is a really important question for exercise uh, professionals to ask their clients. How often do you do number twos? Uh, if you're not pooing on a regular basis, if you're not getting the junk out of your body, and it's called junk for a reason, it's called poo because you don't want it inside your body, it's rubbish, it's the rubbish junk in your body that you want to get out of there, and your gastrointestinal transit time ideally is somewhere between 12 to 24 hours. good way to test that, by the way, is to eat something like corn, licorice, beetroot. They, they tend to be quite visible when they come out. Uh, and if, if you eat either of, or any of those and they come out within 12 to 24 hours, you know that you're clearing your body out pretty quickly. And could that be a good thing versus, uh, and I always share an example of a client I had when I said to him, Maddie, how often do you do number twos? He said, Sundays. He didn't say sparkle day, by the way. He said Sunday. Uh, he said, I go into the bathroom on Sunday with a newspaper and hope that something comes out. Well, that's one of the biggest causes of bowel, bowel or colon cancer is that we're not pooing enough. So when you get fiber, a high fiber cereal, when you get fiber in your diet, so you've got brooms to sweep the junk out of your body, so your gastro, gastrointestinal transit time is fast, your chances of bowel or colon cancer become much less. Now, there are some dietitians and, and nutritionists that will argue that and that you don't need fiber. I don't, again, I don't want to get into that argument I do want to do number twos on a regular basis because if you don't, you tend to feel bloated and uncomfortable and the stuff that's junk stays in your body rather than coming out. Uh, and as suggested, not only should you be doing number twos on a regular basis every 12 to 24 hours, if not more often, but it should slide out easily. You shouldn't be pushing and straining and then making an uncomfortable experience. So interestingly, if for breakfast you were to have a banana or some high fiber juice or some high fiber cereal or a combination of those, you probably wouldn't have too much challenge with going to num do number twos on a regular basis. The other challenge with all these three and a lot of most breakfast products, it's interesting though because it's some people will say um, don't have wheat bix because it's too high in carbohydrate, but porridge is good for you. The question I always have is how does your body know the difference between porridge and, and wheat bix or porridge and bananas or porridge and whatever other fiber you put into your body because carbohydrate cho carbohydrate hydrogen oxygen uh, your body doesn't know where it's coming from it just knows that that's what it uses for energy and obviously there's three places that we use carbohydrate for our brain is glucose uh, glycogen for our muscles and glycogen for our liver and we only store half a kilo and it's the energy macronutrient for fast activity hard and fast sprinting hard and fast lifting anything that we do at 100 percent effort uh, the body prefers to burn carbohydrate for that. So do we need it? And again, there's a big argument about whether or not you need it, but I always ask those four supplementary questions. Do you have a stack of energy? Are you performing at your best? Do you love what you see in the mirror? And are you getting the results that you want? And if somebody's not saying yes to all of those four, then we need to change some things. Would that be fair? If you do have a stack of energy, if you are performing at your best, if you do love what you see in the mirror and you are getting the results that you want, how about whatever you're doing is working? Whether you're having bananas for breakfast or wheat picks for breakfast or porridge for breakfast or blueberries because they're a superfood, doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing is working for you. If, you have, if you're saying, no, I don't have a stack of energy, I'm not performing at my best, I don't like what I see in the mirror and I'm not getting the results that I want, then regardless of what superfoods you're eating or what eating plan you're on or whether you're intermittent fasting or eating five times a day, it's obviously not working because I always ask this question. If I'm eating a certain way and if I'm exercising a certain way, should I be able to demand from my eating and exercise plan, demand, Roy, a stack of energy, high performance, look good and feel good, get the results that I want? Why would I do any form of eating plan or exercise plan if I can't say yes to those four questions? So maybe a really great uh, question and answer session with yourself and then with your clients. Whatever they're doing at the moment, could it be a good check-in? Do you have a st stack of energy all day, every day? Do you wake up with energy? Do you go to bed with energy, sleep deeply, wake up again? 
Are you performing at your best at everything that you do? Do you love what you see in the mirror and are you getting the results that you want? And if the answer is no, then we need to make some changes. Now, it might be that you need to eat breakfast. It might be, I don't know. It might be that you need to stop eating breakfast because you're eating too much food and breakfast is just slowing you down. It's another interesting take note. A lot of people talk about food, but usually when you eat food, too much food for that to be specific, we don't feel energetic. We feel really tired and lethargic and I need to have a snooze because I've eaten too much food. And for some people, that's why they don't like to have breakfast because they eat breakfast and then they feel tired and lethargic rather than energetic. So could that be a good test? Well, I, I eat and I don't feel energetic. Well, then maybe that's not the right thing to eat on the not, not the right time of the day to eat. So if I wrap all of that up with something really exciting, do you want to get the best results for you and all your clients? Of course, yes. Then how about we stick to what's going to work best for our client and is it possible that that could be different for everybody? Is it possible that some people love breakfast and some people hate it? Some people like to eat up until 4 o'clock in the afternoon and some people don't like to eat till after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Some people love breakfast and some people don't want to ever have breakfast. Some people love wheat wheat fix, it's their favourite cereal and other people would rather eat dirt than wheat fix because they don't like it. There was my K-Man's friend who obviously thinks bananas are terrible and other people think bananas are great. So let's find out from our client, what do you love to eat? What's your favorite food? Let's always include it. What don't you like to eat? Let's never include it. Why do you eat food? And could that be a really important question? Because there's lots of different reasons that people eat and some of them have nothing to do with hunger. Should we ask where people like to eat? Because some people like to eat breakfast at home. Some people like to eat breakfast at a restaurant or a cafe. Some people like to have a coffee for breakfast and some people like to have bacon and eggs in the full shebang. How about we find out? Isn't that the important part of being an exercise professional? And I always ask these three really important questions for me as an exercise professional. Do I know how to get people really fit? Do I know how to get people really strong? And can I customize that fit and strong program to suit their lifestyle? If I can do that for every single one of my clients, get them really fit, get them really strong and give them a program that's going to fit into their lifestyle to make them fit and strong, what will make, or how will their life be different? Will their life be better? If I'm really fit, what happens to my body? If I'm really strong, what happens to my body? Is it possible that I will be healthier? Is it possible that my brain will work better? I'll have great hair, skin and nails. I'll have better posture. I'll have better self-esteem. I can fight germs, bugs and viruses. I'll have a body that's a fast fat burning, calorie burning, food burning, alcohol burning, ice cream and chocolate burning machine. My brain will have happy drugs pumping through it all the time. That's what happens when we get fit and strong. So as an exercise professional, is it my responsibility to get people as fit and as strong as possible and do it in a way that's going to suit their lifestyle? And whether that includes breakfast or doesn't, does that really matter? If somebody doesn't want to eat breakfast, in the overall big picture, does that matter? And a step further than that, if somebody doesn't want to have breakfast because they are a committed intermittent faster and they never eat till after four o'clock in the afternoon, and I tell them they have to eat breakfast, is it possible that our relationship will break down really quickly and I'll never be able to help them to be fit and strong because we're having, having an argument at the start of our relationship about whether or not they should eat breakfast. I want to build relationships with my clients. I want to build relationships with people to make sure that they're healthy, fit and strong. How about you? So as an exercise professional, let's get people as healthy, fit and strong as possible, whether they eat breakfast or not, whether they eat cereal or not, whether they eat carbohydrate or not. Wouldn't it be great to build a relationship and get people healthy and fit and strong and stay that way for long? Healthy, fit and strong for long. Woohoo! Yay! Healthy, fit and strong for long. <laughs>